Amanda Schneestrom from Bloodbath and Catatonia. Uh, I play the Black Star 101 series and also the Flight Club. Love it. Uh, for me, the whole summer festival season is standing out. Uh, I mean, Blood Bath ain't an um, active band where we're touring. Uh, we're kind of just, you know, we're lucky enough to just get together, get all the guys together from their own active other main bands, hit some festivals. Just, uh, I just see it as a one long extended party, basically, you know. So, I mean, we never toured or anything, so basically the festivals for us is our tour. So, that's how we always had it. First of all, I can't really put into context that we've been around that long. It's, uh, I, would, I, I would never have guessed that, you know, being around for that long. Uh, the band started out just as a side project. Uh, it's a fun thing to do. It's still a bloody fun thing to do. It just moved up from being a side road into more of a serious thing. And I think we've been through, musically we've been through the whole kind of, you know, everything in death metal basically. Touching up on the Florida stuff, the Stockholm stuff, the really brutal stuff, the heavy stuff, fast stuff, everything. And, uh, yeah, it's like a chameleon, really, in metal. We just touch upon what we enjoy, basically. And uh, it's a big freedom to do that. No one's telling you to do anything. It's just appreciation, you know, 100% for Blood Bath. So it's a very liberating band to be in. For me, I would probably think about death metal 30 years rather than 20 years. Because my biggest memories is from the late 80s, early 90s. That's when the first peak for death metal was really big. And uh, incredible releases came out during those years. And then, you know, 10 years later, death metal kind of went a little bit away. Music, you know, I wouldn't say trends, but it kind of cycles back and forth what's, you know, bigger and for the moment and stuff like that. But these days I think that metal is just as big as it ever was. The interest is out there and uh, some of the legendary bands are still doing it. And there's a, a, a hell of a lot of new talents out there actually. To whoop my ass any day, you know. Back in the day that, that was more like a... Uh, what do you call it? Like uh, the competition wasn't that fierce actually. These days, young guys, 12, 14 years old, will knock you off. You know, it's crazy how the evolution turned like that. But it's also good. It's very healthy. A lot of good. It's all about music in the end, anyway. Good fucking music. So I think one music kind of led to another. Like I grew up with heavy metal music, and somehow. Down the line, you always seek what's heavier, what's more brutal than this. And kind of automatically led you into thrash metal. And the thrash metal bands kind of open up for the death metal thing. So it's just a natural kind of progression into what's more extreme. And then on the sidelines, you have the black metal thing going on and everything. So, and the doom metal thing going on. And I kind of just embraced it all, basically, you know. Uh, and also, tape trading was a big, big, big reason for finding out what was out there. Because the internet wasn't around, not invented yet. So it was all word of mouth, tape trading, and uh, the scene was really vibrant back then, you know. People met in the record stores. And, like, the, the local record store was actually like the blabbermouth, where you heard rumors and exchanged all the news. So it was a cool time. Just very primitive. I think with every singer we've been having, uh, they brought something different to the table. Michael, Peter, and Nick, they're all excellent singers, good frontmen, but they have a very distinguished, different kind of style. So I, I never compare them to each other. And I never will. I just appreciate that we're having them in a the band. And these days we're working with Nick. He's been in the band now for four plus years 
and uh, we just cut a new album actually it's gonna come out this fall and he's on that as well of course and uh, no I, I think we're having a blast Nick is really fitting in we're actually we were friends before he joined the band so you know the social thing is actually even just as important these days because when you're working that close with someone and you're traveling with them you really gotta get along and Nick's funny guy his great sense of humor and everything so I love I love having Nick in a band with Bloodbath, uh, it's it's more about uh, keeping up like the legacy of a death metal tone. Uh, we've been always uh, representing the Swedish sound, kind of more or less. We always incorporated the legendary HM Boss HM2 pedal, and we always uh, morphed that with uh, with the Black Star amp per se. So you, you keep like the, the overdrive pretty low on the on, on the black star and you color the EQ and, and the level from the pedal into the amp. This colorization, that's just basically the trademark of Bubba. So if it ain't broken, you're not fixing it. Uh, in the studio we do. Uh, live we use whatever we get our hands on basically. Uh, we're not too fussy about it, it's like we can get anything to work, uh, but obviously the HM2 pedal is not involved with Catatonic, <laughs> for obvious reasons. There's no chainsaw going on in there. Same guitars. Same guitars, same guitars, just a different kind of attitude, but uh, yeah, I guess it's still, I mean, same fingers moving on the fretboards. So. Uh, it was probably Michael from Opeth that um, hinted about it and said like you know the classic Marshall thing if if you want the modern version of that you, you see black star it's like that that's just dead on that was dead on at the time when he said that and uh, yeah it's been smooth it's always worked and I love the little practice amps and everything it's just a good line in general uh, our old guitar player used to have the 200 watts I always had the 100 watt I think it's enough for me uh, no, it's just been working excellent actually, so, and I also always love the, the British to the US kind of modern thing, I always love that. It's just a one fucking knob can do that much colorization, that, that, that was a huge a turn on, like a selling point for me. Yeah. Uh, the next thing uh, on the map for Bloodbath will be a brand new album, our fifth full length album. And uh, as I said before, we've only been doing festival stuff, but now that's gonna change into touring, actually. Yeah, so we're gonna bring it up a notch, head out on two tours coming up for 2018 uh, and 2019. So the next tour on the corner is gonna be in December with Creator, Dimmu Borgir and the Hatebreed. Catatone is a little bit on a hiatus right now, um, so not much immediate plans, but in the long run we're probably looking at making another album at some point, and once that's done, we always end up in a cycle of three, four years of touring, so it's gonna be a lot of... I'm gonna, I'm gonna get busy, for sure. Yeah. <laughs>